shoots along the boards. And it's cleared into neutral ice, where now it's picked up by Murray here. Oh, boy, off the skate. Otherwise, the Blue Devils may have had a three-on-one chance. Flatley try to flip it in. Pass now is behind Pellin. It goes into the Blue Devil. End of the rink. In behind. Up along the board. Blue Devils trying to get it out, but it will be kept in by Kristen Johnson. And now finally, Vanette gets it into neutral ice. Bialki after. Packed away by Marvin. Center ice off the skate of Pellin in the Blue Devil end. Blue and Virginia just will clear it out, and Bialki will dump it in. 14-15 to go in our opening period. No score in our hockey game. This is Marvin off the... fans and welcome to my nine sports coverage of high school hockey from the Bree Coopaletti Arena. Along with Reed Larson, I'm Bob Cohen and our entire Masabi Community Television production team. It should be a good one tonight, a rivalry that goes back many, many, many years. The Golden Bears and the Blue Devils. Reed, it's always fun doing Blue Devils, Golden Bears hockey. Throw out the records. Let's just have fun tonight. Well, it's fun in our seat here tonight, but I can tell you a couple of years ago, it wasn't always fun standing over on the bench. It was nerve-wracking in front of a great high school hockey crowd here at the Bree in uh, the Miners Memorial Building here in Virginia. Decent crowd here, but it's going to start filtering in here as uh, as we get closer to game time. But awesome atmosphere, great high school hockey. I'm excited. Special night here. They also have the uh, teddy bear throw tonight. Uh, all the donations go to the Salvation Army. They sold a ton of them before the game tonight, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it should be great here tonight. Uh, so hopefully we get the teddy bear toss going right away in the first period here. Virginia scores, and they, uh, the teddy bears will come flying out. Matt Carlson will be starting in the nets tonight for the Golden Bears.
Blue Devils come into the record of two and five. The Golden Bears are four and three. Reed, I look at something impressive on the Golden Bears side on the power play. They're clicking at 50%. They've had 36 power play opportunities and have scored 18 power play goals. That's pretty impressive. Well, that doesn't surprise me, Bob, when you've got some high-end defensemen like uh, the Golden Bears have right now here in Will and Nick Troutline. These guys quarterback those power plays back there, and a lot of it's generated by their, their team speed, but they're real, real good smarts back on the blue line, and you're going to see a good puck movement and lots of shots to the net, but those guys are enormous. Look at the size of Nick Troutline. Huge. You get a chance to see number 40 when he steps out onto the rink. Big gentleman with a shot that I'm sure has got fire that comes off at of the end of his stick. Big boys. It'll be Mac Lodiger starting for the Bears tonight, and Ian Kangas will start for Virginia, and Coach uh, Finsif has been going now with uh, Ian Kangas quite a bit. He's a sophomore. He's been really, really solid in the nets. Yeah, I've seen Ian Kangas uh, come through the ranks as uh, uh, as coach in Virginia just a couple of years ago, watching him come through, and that's a big, uh, a big boy and uh, been very solid between the pipes here for uh, the last couple of years, but was a guy that was kind of down to the wire there as uh, uh, an elite goaltender after the season last year. So uh, good, nice, big, tall gentleman in the net. Should be fun to watch him play. Just underway. Puck is in neutral ice. This is Bryce Kopp coming into the zone, and we've got an offside called. Nice crowd, more and more people making their way in on this Thursday night. Well, Thursday night here, and there's Thursday night rivalry night here at the Bree Cupoletti Arena. The Miners Memorial Complex here, and uh, only a few meetings left in this building before uh, they build a new one and co-op the two teams together, Bob. Yep, that's not far away. That's going to happen real soon. Puck is picked up by Everson, cross ice for Will Troutwine, and he'll rifle it in and a glove save by Kangas. They're going to put as many pucks on Kangas as they can. He's been seeing a lot of pucks lately. Again, a very young, a very inexperienced Virginia hockey team against a more experienced Everett Gilbert team. Yeah, you've got a lot of upperclassmen there in the, uh, the black and gold here tonight, and uh, Coach Terrell and I believe... Is he in his ninth season with the Golden Bears? I think he started the same year I did. Uh, and I was only in Virginia for seven years, but now two more years. Here's a goal by Tommy Shalotic. Top shelf. 51 seconds into our hockey game. Tommy Shalotic scores. What a shot there. Uh, Shalotic with uh, a shot that went right under the bar, and it appeared as it was right off the faceoff there. And Shalotic. Uh, nothing much that Kangas could do there off of that shot, but as you see here on the rebound, comes right around the dot, and a little bit after the faceoff, but right around the dot, and he shot it below the dot, real tight area that he uh, fit that puck through right over the left shoulder of Ian Kangas. Here comes Drake back for the Blue Devils. Try to center it. Hobber in behind tries to give it back to... Drake, now back to the point. Tiedemann will keep it in from Virginia, right out in front of Lodiger. That's cleared away from the slot area. Now it goes up into the crowd, and we'll have a face-off. That was a very active building here uh, when you get both student sections in here, and that's one of the things you'll miss as, uh, as uh, a former somebody that used to be involved in this rivalry is you always like to see the student sections banter back and forth. Uh, it should get interesting as the game goes on, Bob. I've been watching this for well over 40 plus years watching these two teams battle. Here come the Bears back. This is Nick Bedette. He'll carry it along the near boards. Here's a shot taken from Johnson and the save made. That was Gage Johnson. 40 years, so you might know a thing or two about a thing or two when it comes to these two programs, Bob. Oh, yes, I've watched them. I've watched the ups and I've watched the downs. The 70s were really spectacular to watch. We used to have, uh, you know, the Pavlages and the Carlsons and all those players playing years ago here at the Miners. Centering pass, it's deflected back from Lavander. Lavander trying to get it to Johnson in that corner. It's along the near boards. And now it's taken away by Brady Seppala of the Blue Devils. Gets it up into neutral ice. 
Will Troutwine takes a whack at it. It's into the attacking zone behind Lodeker. Shoots it along the boards. Everson could not control it. Brendan Peterson battles along the boards for the Blue Devils. Here's Peterson now trying to shoot one towards the slot area. And it'll jump out over the blue line and cleared back into neutral ice once again. Team's kind of feeling each other. We've got a delayed penalty coming on the Bears and the Blue Devils are gonna go on a power play. Slashing penalty coming. Well, penalty there, a little slashing penalty here for the Golden Bears, and it appears that uh, the Blue Devils will get the first crack at special teams here tonight with a man advantage, and uh, Coach Finseth coming out with his number one unit here, led up at about 32% on the power play, and the Golden Bears at 84 on the penalty kill. Not too bad for either squad. 32% still really good on the power play. And uh, led by Ryan Scherf. And right now it appears that this is, a, is this the second unit that's out there right now? I would think this is going to be their nope, first this unit. This is the first unit. Yep. Scherf with seven goals on the season. Here's Sepla controlling the puck. Gets it to Peterson. And now here comes Ryan Scherf in. A shot right and goal! Ryan Scherf on the power play ties it. Well, as we just barely got his name out of our mouth and through the microphone, Ryan Scherf finds his way on a clean break down the right-hand side of the rink. And you can see he comes in, blocks a pass, comes in all alone and shoots far side over Lodiger's right pad and on his blocker side and notches the game up at one. And again... Virginia's power play clicking, and it clicked right away on the first try, Bob. That was a quick one, 18 seconds into the man advantage. And we're tied at a goal apiece. Here is Will Troutwine. Try to hit Elliott Van Orsdale, that does not click. Although Meyer will keep it in the zone. Here's Van Orsdale, side of the net, comes right out in front. Back to the point, Troutwine, let's go, shot, goal! Will Troutwine scores! Well, and you're going to see something pretty interesting here right now as Ian Kangas is wincing in pain at the moment. Somebody had gone to the net, and we'll see this. There was a shot there. I didn't see the golden beer that went flying to the net, but Kangas was down because he had gotten ran into by a bear going hard to the net. And Will Troutwine not afraid to fire the puck there. But yeah, you saw the, the bear going flying hard to the net on the side, and Kangas was down in pain, not even trying to make the save, just trying to get up. Seventh goal of the season for Trout One, and just like that, the Bears have taken the lead. Here's Shalotta coming back. His shot was wide, rings are on the boards. And we have a whistle, and we'll have a face-off as the puck goes up into the crowd. Yeah, I didn't... Uh... I don't know that uh, that the Golden Bear player had any other route to go, but other than through the crease, and when he did, he made collision with Ian Kangas, and he was down and out. It was an easy shot hard to the net by Will Troutwine, and it, uh, it found its way to the back of the net real easy as Kangas was hurt. Blue Devils will break out into neutral ice. Nemanich puts it in. Now Troutwine to Everson. Outlet pass too far for the Golden Bears Halliday. Eveleth Gilbert won the junior varsity game tonight. Three to nothing over Virginia. And right now they have a 2-1 lead here in the varsity game. Here's Everson trying to center it. In behind Tassoni, let's go of a shot. Save made by Kangas. And now the Blue Devils finally do get it into center ice. Into the attacking zone. Everson will clear it. Hit Tassoni, that should have been too many men on the ice. No call though as Shalotic tried to tee it up. Well, they've changed some of those rules here now too and as to how the referees are gonna call that. And we'll get to that here at the next whistle, Bob. This is Hoffman to Brandon Lind. 
12-22 to go in our opening period. It's 2-1 Elvis Gilbert. This is Brandon Matson. He'll drop it. A shot taken. Deflected up into the crowd. We're going to take a break. 12-13 to go in our opening period. 2-1 Evleth Gilbert. I'm in carpentry. Uh, we do a lot of woodworking. Uh, right now we're actually building a couple houses. I like the atmosphere. Like everybody around here, all the faculty, they really like to help out. My instructor, Leo Lucas, he's He's been in the field for at least 30 years or so. My goal with carpentry is to work for a larger company down in the cities. My name is Tyler Kemp and this is my Masabi story. Face off just outside the blue line. This is Brandon Lynn with Tommy Shalotic and Cooper Matson. They're going up against Logan Bielke. He like Elijah Carlson and Jordan Mast. Comes Mast, flips it in behind the net. A big body there at center ice. Trying to stun the Blue Devil there on the faceoff. Puck is in behind. Nobody centered there, and so Nick Bedett now will just drop back into neutral, and he'll fire it into the attacking zone once again. Callister after it for Virginia. Shoots along the boards to the near side. This is Jordan Mass trying to control the puck. He has it taken away by Badette. Boy, Nick is a big kid. He's a senior, one of the captains of the Golden Bears. Centering pass. It's tipped away, and here comes Mass away. Mass has got Carlson. Carlson now hits for the bench, and now the rest of the Blue Devils on a line change as the Scherf line out there. Now Scherf Peterson and Irvin. Here comes Van Orsdale. His shot deflected away. Blue Devils, Scherf coming back. Got off. Oh, I think they caught it. Yep, they did catch it. Todd Skaya, one of the referees tonight, along with Brian Purpage. And Troy Nichols on the lines tonight. Troy Nichols, Virginia native lines in here tonight. Going back to just a little bit earlier, we talked about the potential um, too many men in the ice penalty. They've changed some of the rules on that as if if the player inadvertently touches the puck and they're in contact with the boards, referees are not looking to call that one. But okay. if they play the puck uh, and they step out of the ice, now they're calling it. So if it hits you in the skate, lip likely not calling it. Okay. I still think there's one rule that they should always enforce is when you get a two-minute penalty, you should serve the entire two minutes, even if you score a goal. I, I think they should make it hurt when you get a penalty. That's just my opinion. Well, Here like comes straight back shot. Oh, Lodiger, I think he took it off his mask and it fell into his glove. Well, that was a big boy that took the shot there, Dylan Drake, for the Blue Devils. And uh, Dylan right now is a, a Mountain Iron Buell student and right now is committed to play football at BSU, am I right? He had a he had a great football season for MIB. Came up one game short of the prep championship. Well, it's fun to watch him play whatever sport he plays because he's one of those guys that you don't even have to tell him what to do. He's gonna move his feet 150,000 miles an hour and everything is yes sir, yes coach, absolutely whatever you need me to do and that's like a dream type of athlete to coach. And he's also a good student in the classroom absolutely. too. This is Shalata controlling the puck for the Bears. He'll take it and now dump it in deep to Halliday. Jack Halliday has it taken away by Tommy Nemanich. Halliday controls it. Now Tassonian behind the net. Gets it back to Badet at the point. To Tassoni. Here's a blast. Tassoni and Ooh. Kangas with a save. Tassoni with the bomb and Kangas standing in there. And it, it appears that Kangas is just fine. It was that one play uh, uh, that a player went to the net and knocked him over. And, and he made a nice save there. Just got a nice text message here, Bob, from my good friend and uh, legend tennis coach here at Virginia High School, Jeff Moss, and great to, uh, to have you listening tonight, my friend, and uh, miss you as well. Good luck to you. We got icing called. Yep, did I see Jeff is uh, gonna 
retire this year teaching coaching he says that every year he says he's gonna retire every year well they posted for a girls tennis coach well, for next there you fall, go so. there you go they got to do that but yep. uh it's tough to replace coaches and it teachers is. like that and uh legend in in all senses of the word boys tennis girls tennis girls basketball you name it the guy's done everything and uh he's well loved by everybody at uh, virginia high school the students and the staff and great man yes he is puck clears his own this is will troutwine puts it right in and kangas will glove it and hold on to it and get a face off 853 to go in our opening period also got a nice text from a former golden bear athlete coach carrie thomas watching tonight in new jersey she's out in new jersey watching our telecast absolutely and right. carrie Beidel watching tonight down in florida <laughs> oh there's a blast there's a blast right there uh, a legend another blue devil legend here in this community he's a fantastic athletic director for me and miss that man i do too i really do here's Cole Meyer trying to come to the net. Van Orsdale lost control of it. That's picked up by Ben Irvin. Off Peterson. It's dumped into the zone. Troutwine will get there just ahead of Irvin. Here's Will. Centering pass off a skate of Van Orsdale. It'll be kept in the zone by Rudebush. And now it jumps out over and Virginia has to tag up. Troutwine to Everson. Come the Bears. This is Bryce Kopp from the Masabi East athlete who had a pretty good football season. Shot right on and a save made by goaltender Kangas. Under eight minutes to go in the opening period. Here's Elliot Van Orsdale in behind the Blue Devil net. Trying to center it. Brady Seppler all over him. Rudebush comes in and tries to help out. Seppler will pick it up. He'll get it up and the Blue Devils try to clear it out. Rudebush will get it in the center ice and it goes all the way back in the Golden Bear zone where Nick Bedett now will give it to Bryce Kopp. Almost a takeaway. Van Orsdale back in his own end. Seven and a half to play in the opening period. Van Orsdale with all kinds of trouble from Scherf. Well, the one player you're going to see a lot of tonight is Ryan Scherf and it seems to me that Cale Finseth is doing a really good job of, of mixing Ryan Scherf in every other shift. Uh, they're not getting ridiculous pressure on the forecheck, but as of right now, it's a little passive. They're trapping up the neutral zone a little bit, but when you can free up Ryan Scherf, it's going to be fun to watch. Here is Irvin, has the puck knocked away by Nick Bonnet, a pair of 25s battling there. Cop coming back for the Bears. Cop shot and a save made. We're going to take a break. 6.51 to go in our opening period. My nine sports from the Brie Coppoletti Arena. Starkovich Distributing Company in Virginia has been a longtime Blue Devil sponsor on Channel 5 Television Sports and has been a big contributor to the economic climate on the Iron Range for over 70 years. Call 741 9061 when you're looking for someone to supply your beverage needs. Rudebush in a circle with Halliday. Here's Badette. Shot hit some traffic. Rudebush will clear it up. Here comes Drake. Drake has got Rudebush behind, shot right on. And Lodiger with the save for the Golden Bears. Again, another, uh, another comment towards the big captain there for uh, the Blue Devils and Dylan Drake. He's a guy that's just going to find a way to get the puck to the net, Bob. And if there's a rebound, careful, because that guy is enormous. He's going to go hard to the net. It's going to be fun to watch him continue here to play tonight as, uh, like I said, Dylan Drake has his heart set and uh, commitment to play college football at BSU, but as of right now, he's a Virginia MI Blue, MIB Blue Devil at the moment playing hockey, and uh, it's fun to watch him as a senior. Here comes Nate to Sony with the puck in the attacking zone, and Kangas will just cover up 
getting a lot of experience on this Golden Bear team. I look at their roster, and these kids have been playing for two, even three years. Yeah, it, Coach Terrell's done a really nice job of, of grooming this group coming through ever since they're back in Pee Wee's. Uh, the same kids playing together, uh, had real success as Pee Wee A's, had real good success as Bantam A's, and... Uh, since their sophomore year, some of these seniors uh, all playing in the varsity lineup, and he's got them doing the things that he wants them to do right now, Bob. And uh, they've had some success, and they've got quite a good team here. Back to the point. Here's Gage Everson letting go of a blast. Now Troutwine will keep it in. Dumped in deep by Brandon Lind. That's Brandon Matson, 26 on this fourth line with Shalotic as the other wingmate. This is Shalotic in behind the net. He got the first goal tonight. And finally, the Blue Devils will clear it into neutral ice, and the Bears will have to regroup. This is Parkinage's shot over the top of the net, and it's cleared all the way down, and we're going to have an icing called on the Blue Devils. Good play. Get an icing. Get your lines changed and get some fresh skaters out there i like the pro rule maybe the high school rule will come someday where you have to if you ice the puck you got to keep your line on <laughs> well you know especially in a single a program like both of these two teams are right now you don't always have the depth to do that it's difficult you do that sometimes when you're tired and as you can see you got guys like like ryan scherf number 15 for the blue devils has played every other shift since the beginning of the period he's probably tired and you know what if he's on the rink after a long shift and he ices the puck, he needs to get off the ice. And, and that's where it's going to hurt people if they ever do bring that in. They do it in college, they do it in juniors, and they do it in the pros. Could be an interesting rule, Pop. Puck gets shot in the uh, zone by Irvin. Now here's Van Orsdale along the near boards. Looks for someone to get the puck up to. He gets it up to Meyer. And now it's cleared. And here come the Blue Devils trying to come out. Ryan Scherf has it taken away by Van Orsdale. And the Blue Devils will get it into neutral ice. And Nick Troutwine now. I really like this sophomore, this Nick Troutwine. I think he's going to be a player that they're going to be watching closely over the next couple of years. Only a sophomore and really a good offensive, defensive man. Watched him play bantams with my grandson from Evelyn. Here we got a penalty coming in. Virginia is going to go on the power play. The second Bears penalty. And it's going to be Van Orsdale going off for slashing. Well, and, uh, you know, just watching this right now, Virginia has been very well disciplined. Uh, I can tell just by the frustrations uh, that could be kicking in, being down by one goal in the first period. And, uh, you know, they've stuck to what Coach Finn Seth has wanted them to do. Uh, they're getting the puck deep. They're taking care of the defensive zone. Um, and they're staying out of the box right now. It, they're, they're actually doing a really nice job against a really good uh, Evelyn Gilbert Masabi East hockey team right now, Bob. This is Scherf right in front of Peterson and a save by Lodiger, and he just covers it up with his pad. We're going back to uh, uh, the power play. A little replay here with Peterson in front of the net, and it was a quick try from the corner right to the forehand side, and Peterson's just going to get that quick rip to the net there. Um, you know, back to the thought about the power play here, though, Bob. You know, as a, a team that's been pumping at 32% and just a little bit better here since they scored on their one try here in the first period already, that's pretty impressive, and it's a dangerous situation here for the Golden Bears to be in. Blue Devils will be on the power play for... Minute 25 yet. 3.45 to go in our period. Here is Nemanich with the puck. Let's go over Rister. Off the glove to the back wall. It's cleared away from the slot area. And here come the Bears. This is Kopp into center ice. Takes a big check. Peterson will grab the puck for the Blue Devils. They'll regroup on this power play. Cross ice pass goes to Seppala. This is Brady Seppala running it down. And now into center ice. Up to Dylan Drake. He drops it back for Peterson. Seppel again, let's go over shot, hits some traffic in front. Goes to the back wall once again. Coming up on three minutes to go in the opening period. 45 seconds to go on the Virginia power play. 2-1 Elvith Gilbert. And now Bryce Kopp comes away with the puck on the left side. He's got Cole Meyer in the middle. Here's Kopp, he tried to backhand it in front. Kopp will continue to control the puck. 
Although he takes a bump or two, but just such a big, strong kid for the Golden Bears. Now Kangas will drop it off. Virginia has time for another rush. Power play time with 2.40 to go in the opening period. Puck comes up to Ben Irvin. He lost control of it, and it's quickly dumped right in the Virginia zone. In after his Cole Meyer, he could not control it. Callister up to Irvin off his skate, and it's fired. Well, they try to fire it in, and now both teams are back at five aside. Nick Troutwine in behind his net. The sophomore turns and goes the other way. Just over two minutes to play in our period. This is Nick Badette. He gets bumped off the play. Now loose puck is picked up by Van Orsdale. Loose in the slot area. Shalotic will dump it in deep. Matt Callister now off the boards. Comes to the near side where Rudabush will control it for the Blue Devils. Here comes a sophomore, Keegan Rudabush. Cross ice pass. Here come the Blue Devils. This is Peterson coming in. Hit some traffic and now here come the Bears back. Nick Troutwine into the zone. Troutwine shot deflected up. We've got to take a break. 137 to go in the period. My nine sports from the... Sabi Range College is, I think, the perfect college for a traditional or non-traditional student. I came here to start my nursing career. I, I really like being able to work with people rather than being secluded. Uh, being able to help people heal them, that makes a difference, wearing your heart on your sleeve. My name is Becky and this is my Masabi story. They are. Back to action, 90 seconds to play in our opening period. Drake, let's go with a shot, just hit, missed the corner. Almost got one, there it is. There's Shalotic back in the attacking zone. Shalotic carries it in behind the net. Shot by Halliday, or check that, uh, shot by Lind. Now to Sony, gets it back to Everson at the point. Trout wine on the near side. Let's go for shot right on. And Kangas saw that one. Well, good little flurry there for the Golden Bears down in the Blue Devil end, but a rush from the other direction as well. And a shot there from Trout wine, and that thing had eyes. If uh, Halliday gets a piece of that thing in front of the net, it's a scary situation. Uh, for a guy like Ian Kanga standing there right now, and uh, it sure as heck looks better going to the locker room down 2-1 to one than it does 3-1, to one. and a good save there again by Kangas to hold on here with a minute left in the period. Ryan Scherf will pick up the puck. We're into our final minute of the opening period. Peterson will now dump it in deep for Virginia, where Will Troutwine will shoot it along the boards. Drake keeps it in for Virginia. 48 seconds to go in the opening period. 2-1 Elvis Gilbert. Troutwine off a skate of Alex Haas, and it's put right back in the Golden Bear zone. Gage Everson, long pass, missed Haas, and it, or missed uh, Lavender, and it'll be icing on the Bears. Reed, it's nice having you back in the saddle here, calling hockey with me. Well, it's great to be back here right next to you in a building we're both well familiar with. And uh, it's a night off here for the uh, the GRG Lightning girls hockey team as the why you didn't see me the last couple games. And uh, I'll get to these whenever I can. But uh, having a great time coaching girls hockey. Oh, I'll bet you, you know, and you've got a real nice athlete over there. We'll talk about maybe we get some chance. And that's that Claire Vekic, who is one of the best athletes I've seen in Northeastern Minnesota in many, many years. Three sports, good in the school. The good kid, the good yep. kid as well, too. Couple seconds remaining here in this opening period. 
Tiedemann will pick up the puck. Here's Tiedemann. Four seconds to go. Shoots it over the top of the net. And our clock is going to run out. We've played 17 minutes of hockey. We've got a good one from the Bree Cupoletti Arena. The Golden Bears of Eveleth Gilbert 2. The Blue Devils of Virginia 1. And we'll have a timeout. And we'll come back with our first intermission guest. Morning. How's it going today, ma'am? I just want you to know, I love this city. I can always find a parking place and I never have to parallel park. Look here, every car is bunched up over on that side of the street, so it makes it really easy for me to park. And what's so odd is that yesterday, every car was on that side of the street. Well, ma'am. Oh, just call me Yvette. And what was your name? Uh, I'm Chad. It's nice to meet you, Yvette. Uh, calendar parking is why all these cars are on this side of the street. Uh, here in Virginia we have calendar parking so that way the cars are on the right side so that way it makes it a little easier. So now on an even day you would park on the even side of the street as the addresses. So you see these house numbers over here all have even numbers. So on an even day you park on that side. On an odd day you would park on the same side of the street as the odd number houses. So during the winter months of November through April, we try to make sure that cars are parked on the even or odd side of the street, depending on the calendar day. So you're going to give me a ticket? I thought you were so nice. I am nice, and I'll tell you why I'm nice. Because the Virginia Police Department, when calendar parking is followed, it ensures that our city crews can get out and plow all the roadways after a major snow event. Also, it makes it a lot safer for all the pedestrians and all other traffic in the area. Besides that, many of the streets in Virginia are narrow, so when it comes to emergency vehicles getting through, it's nice to have all the vehicles parked on the right side of the roadway, so ambulances, fire trucks, squad cars, even just regular vehicles can get through. I am so sorry. I didn't know. Can I tell you something else? Yes, I know. I know. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. What I was going to say is actually during the summer months, calendar parking changes a little bit. We try to make it a little easier for everybody. So from the months of May through October, you only have to worry about switching sides every two weeks. So on the first of the month, you make sure that you park on the odd side of the street. And on the evening of the 16th, you swap over to the even side of the street for the rest of the month. And just one more thing. Yes? How about you move your vehicle to the proper side of the street and we'll call it even. I could just hug you. Can I hug you? No, ma'am. But you need to know that calendar parking always starts the previous evening. So at 6 p.m. the previous night, you always park for the very next day. Call me Yvette. Thank you, Yvette. Welcome back here. I'm alongside Steve Troutwine, assistant coach of the Eveleth Gilbert Masabi East Golden Bears. And Steve, thanks for joining us here at the break. Uh, you guys had a game Tuesday night against Ely. Give us your thoughts on that game Tuesday night. Um, you know, it's, it was a fun game. Uh, kids played hard. Um, we were able to try a lot of different things. We, we get up early like that and we're able to try guys in different positions, uh, different plays, um, and see how they were going to work. So it was, it, was, it was fun. Awesome, awesome. So uh, Big Tilly here tonight at the Miners Memorial Building here in Virginia and uh, always a rivalry game. Give us what you think to expect here from uh, Virginia Mountain Iron Buell. Well, I think it's going to be a hard-fought game. Uh, it always is. It uh, doesn't matter what, what the teams are like. It, it has been for the last... 50 years. Um, it should be a physical game. Uh, hopefully our guys come out and they, uh, they play their game and, and we take care of business. Absolutely. Anything that you think that the Golden Bears can execute on here tonight uh, in order to get the W here in the Miners building? Uh, I think we need to use our speed. Uh, we do have some big guys up uh, on the back end that uh, can move the puck and, and move really well. Um, and up front, we got a lot, a lot of guys that can go fast. So hopefully, talk about a couple of those guys. You got some talent on the back end well, there. I yeah, know a few of them. We've got uh, four really solid defensemen, and even our fifth and sixth defensemen. And uh, we got uh, Will Troutwine and Nick Troutwine, Nick Bedette, and uh, four-year senior uh, Gage Everson. Been around a long time, and, and uh, Nick's the only new one. Nick Troutwine is the only new one, uh, and he's he's 
picking it up. He's he's really starting to learn the game at this level, and it's fu it's fun to see them all keep getting better every game. Awesome, awesome, Steve. Talk about this co-op that's coming here in the next couple of years, and and what excites this area about that co-op. Oh, it's it's going to definitely take some getting used to. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, they can do once they combine. Um, it, uh, it it really should be good for the community. Once everybody, you know, at, at first it's going to be hard for people to, to get used to it, but I think once it's all said and done, I think everybody's going to really have a good time with it. Well, you know, take advantage of this rivalry, rivalry while it's still here, Steve. You know, talk about what that's meant to these two communities here and, you know, uh, the last few decades. Oh, that's going back, you know, coming to this building and uh, going to the hip when during this game, it's always a blast. The, pa the place is packed. Uh, the fans are always well into it. You know, you get both student crowds chanting some stuff they probably shouldn't be chanting, but <laughs> it, it, it's what really makes it a lot, a lot of fun out there. Well, we expect uh, a phenomenal evening here tonight at the Miners Building and a great hockey game. Steve, thank you so much for joining us here, and uh, good luck to the Golden Bears here tonight. All right, well, thank you very much. Starkovich Distributing Company in Virginia has been a longtime Blue Devils sponsor on Channel 5 Television Sports and has been a big contributor to the economic climate on the Iron Range for over 70 years. Call 741-9061 when you're looking for someone to supply your beverage needs. P.S. Engman Agency is a family-owned business that has served the area with compassion and quality service for over 100 years. We are grateful for their fine support of Blue Devil Sports on Channel 5. I'm in carpentry. Uh, we do a lot of woodworking. Uh, right now we're actually building a couple houses. I like the atmosphere, like everybody around here, all the faculty, they really like to help out. My instructor, Leo Lucas, he's, he's been in the field for at least 30 years or so. My goal with carpentry is to work for a larger company down in the cities. My name is Tyler Kemp and this is my Masabi story. to the Copaletti Arena in Virginia. My nine sports coverage of high school hockey on this Thursday night. F with Gilbert and Virginia. 2-1 Bears after the first period. Read three goals in the first three minutes and eight seconds. I was expecting after that many goals, I figured the first period would probably end about six and six or something, but well, the team settled down. Yeah, they settled down a little bit, maybe uh, got into their groove. Uh, I'm really actually impressed to, with how Virginia's playing. I know they struggled with some guys in and out of the lineup, some injuries, uh, uh, some guys that are out. Um, Evleth has had a great start to the season and, and maybe a little bit more firepower on the back end. Uh, they have started a uh, lot of in the net tonight, but uh, like I said, Virginia just doing things the way they need to do it uh, to hang in tonight and uh, doing a real good job of trapping up the neutral zone. 
getting shots to the net, and that must be something that Coach Fence has said before the game. I don't care what you do, get pucks to the net, and you can see that they're shooting from everywhere. Uh, great, great rivalry game here tonight, Bob. I think uh, it's just going to get more interesting as the night goes on. Bears had two penalties for four minutes. Virginia unable to score in a power plays. They have to take advantage when they get that five on four. They have to get at least one power play when they get that many opportunities. Yeah, you know, Virginia with the, with the one goal that they got was a power play goal and um, uh, missed out on the other opportunity. But, uh, you know, like you said, when uh, Virginia is opportunistic, they need to bury the puck uh, when they get their opportunities right now. And, uh, you know, like we said before, continue to shoot the puck to the net. Get shots there because, uh, you know, you see the Golden Bears, they've got a lot of flow and speed through the, the neutral zone and uh, they allow their defensemen to carry the puck. So, uh, puck's been dropped here and uh, second period action with the Bears going left to right and uh, the Devils going right to left. Everson will run it down in his own zone in behind the net. Ben Irvin on him. Here comes Van Orsdale back for the Bears. He'll drop it to Everson. Boy, nice job by a sure back check it a little bit there and knock the puck away. It's in behind the net. Off the glass and it goes all the way down and we're going to have a quick icing. I think the point I was trying to make, you know, that I knew the Blue Devils had a power play goal, but I know they're going to have more and more opportunities and they're really going to have to take advantage when they do get two or three more chances like that. They're one for two on the power play so far. Yeah, you know, and they're, they are definitely going to have to take advantage of those chances and they were lucky enough to, to get a great A opportunity with their top goal scorer uh, with a puck on a stick there. Uh, it, there's going to be more penalties here. Uh, you get a you get a rivalry like this and the emotions in a building like this and like we said before the building kind of packing up a little bit here as it uh, didn't look like it had that many people at the start but is really kind of packing up right now puck is kept in by Badette into the corner Halliday comes in looks for the puck Blue Devils trying to come out and Drake in the attacking zone Drake fires it into the corner. Rudabush was in after it, and now it's picked up by Badette of the Golden Bears. And Hopper will knock the puck back into the zone. Now Tommy Shalotic, he lets go of his shot, hits some traffic off a of Blue Devil. Halliday gives it for Tassoni in behind. Oh, Shalotic tried to tee it up, and he just couldn't get enough stick on it. Now Seth Hopper will dump it in the Golden Bears zone where Nick Troutwine. Gives it to Badette, back to Troutwine on the near side. Oh, nice move around Scherf. And here comes the sophomore's long pass deflected up into the rafters and a bouncing puck. And it's caught by Kangas and we'll have a face off. Well, decent pace here as we start the second period. First couple of minutes in. Puck's going back and forth here, and uh, you're calling Shalotic's name quite often, Bob. He had the first goal of the game for the Golden Bears and just an absolute laser beam that went over the left-hand shoulder of Ian Kangas uh, right in the first minute of the game. Something's going on down in the far end. The official is, I'm not sure what is going on on that end. Oh, there's a piece of glass. I guess the plexiglass has been broken. Is that what they're pointing uh, to? No, I know from experience in this rink that um, sometimes when you open up the corner doors, uh, they don't close the right way. There's a, it's a goofy latch over in the corner up okay. there. It needs to be reclosed so that one piece is on one side and the other is on the other. Gotcha. Uh, because there's, it, it allows for a little bit of a gap there, and if a stick gets caught in there, you're done and over with. I, I remember that quite often in that corner. Hey, I've got another hello to pass out to. T.J. Thomas is watching tonight in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Jackson Hole, Wyoming. That's a blast from the past. My brother played against him when he was at HCC, um, Hibbing Community College, and my brother was at Itasca Community College, and they uh, great rivalry between the two, but a great friendship as well, too. So hello to T.J. Thomas, and I uh, hope you're having fun out there in, uh, in the mountains. In behind the net, that was Gage Johnson. Now Will Troutwine off a skate. Averson carrying a puck in for the Bears, and we've got offside on the Golden Bears. 
Well, we had a little bit of good pace here, Bob, but uh, things slowing down a little bit with whistle after whistle, and uh, have to be a good reminder here to uh, the puck has to cross the blue line first, fellas, in order to stay on side. <laughs> So yes. uh, make sure we, uh, we don't, we're not here until 1130 tonight because whistles are going off left and right. <laughs> I don't think we have that much air time here. Uh, My9 and KBJR, I don't think they can afford to keep us here until midnight. Brandon Matson trying to control it. Or check that, Cooper Matson. I'm talking about his father, Brandon. That was Cooper Matson. 26 on this line with Lind and Shalotic. Here's Matson. And it's cleared into center ice where Tiedemann will get it up to Hobber and he'll dump it in for Virginia. And we'll have a icing called. Boy, I don't think I've seen this many whistles in the first three minutes of a hockey game in quite a while. <laughs> Playing very, very cautious. Well, sure, you, you, the, the, the thing that that you're going to get from Eveleth is they're going to try to stretch the puck out a little bit. They've got some great defensemen. They're going to try to utilize those guys for what they're good at, and that's moving pucks and making passes. Um, but Virginia trying to stretch it out a little bit too, and that's why we're seeing icing here down in, in uh, face-off down the Blue Devil zone. Puck in the slot area, saved by Kangas, comes to the near boards. 14 minutes to play in our second period. Now Peterson tried to get it up. To Irvin and it was off his skate, off his stick, skate stick, and then up into the crowd. <laughs> well, we're we're getting an opportunity to face off at just about every dot on the rink here in the first three minutes of the period, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we got to have a little humor here while the, and the puck goes out of play again. Boy, did you see Johnny Hockey Holy duck on that one? Johnny got it a few years ago. You know, he, <laughs> he wasn't did. paying attention. What was he doing? He was talking. He was yapping his gums yep. like he usually does. And he got hit to Johnny. Well, it's December right now, and that's why it's Johnny Hockey. In the, in the fall, it's Johnny Football. Yep. Yep. Loose puck is picked up by Van Orsdale of the Golden Bears. He puts it in. Cole Meyer in after it. He's the back to Van Orsdale, and a puck is right out in front of the net. No red light. Well, and an opportunity to the net here for uh, for the Golden Bears and and uh, Ian Kangas. Ian Kangas hugging the pipe there to make sure that it doesn't sneak into the short side. And uh, great goaltending play there, but a really nice play by getting that puck right out to the front of the net there for an opportunity for the Bears. Puck is loose in that slot area. And now Van Orsdale will get it back to Badette. Nick will shoot it along the boards to the far side. Callister tries to get it to Irvin. And now finally it's picked up by Peterson, Brendan Peterson. He lost control of it. Now Tiedemann, Peterson will fire it in and Nick Troutwine now in behind his net. Just over 13 to play in our second period. Big crowd here at the Miners Memorial Building. Bryce Kopp into the attacking zone for the Bears on a backhand over the top of the net. Comes to the near side. Van Orsdale now. Cole Meyer shot and a save made by Kangas, the goaltender. And he puck is rifled, not out. Hit some traffic in the circle on the left side. Where's the puck along the side of the net? Picked up by Van Orsdale. Spin move, circle left side. Van Orsdale again on their spin move. Shot was just wide. Cop battles for the puck along the near boards. Van Orsdale comes in, looks for the puck. Now it's off a of skate and it'll clear out of the zone and the Bears will have to regroup. They have to get back on side. Tiedemann will just shoot it into neutral ice and Bodette will just dump it in. We've got a whistle, we've got a break in the action. 12-12 to go in our second period. This is My Nine Sports from Virginia. The P.S. Engman Agency is a family-owned business that has served the area with compassion and quality service for over 100 years. 
we are grateful for their fine support of Blue Devil Sports on Channel 5. Face off in the Virginia zone. Halliday try to tee it up. Sepla working hard for the Blue Devils. Now Peterson trying to flip it out of the zone. Kept in by Shalotic. Shalotic will control it along the near boards. Tiedemann tries to take him in the boards. And now the Blue Devils, Peterson up to Irvin. Off his skate. Gets it into the Golden Bear zone. Irvin shoots along the boards Haltman after it for Evel Gilbert Scherf gets there first this puck now is picked up and the Bears break into the Blue Devil zone Nemanich and now it's cleared this is Gavin Skelton of the Bears gives it to Shalada 11.25 to go in our second period Golden Bears with a 2-1 lead on Virginia to Sony in his own end. Long pass intercepted. That was Sepla. And now the Bears coming back. This is Jack Halliday. Nemanich poke checks it away from him. Rudabush shoots it along the backboards. Back to Nemanich. Now Rudabush. Halliday controls it for Evleth Gilbert. And Virginia again will just clear it into neutral. And the Bears will have to tag up. Well, again, Virginia just, just doing a good job of, of keeping the Golden Bears to the perimeter. They are getting shots to the net, but are the opportunistic shots or the, uh, the high percentage shots getting there? I don't think they are right now, Bob. I think uh, Virginia's doing a nice job of doing what they can, um, but they're working hard. They're getting things, uh, they're getting pucks out, they're getting pucks deep. They're keeping the game interesting and uh, keeping the rivalry interesting. And just like Steve said uh, in his interview in between periods, that you, I don't care what the records are and who's good this year and, and who maybe is a little down. It doesn't matter when these two teams play. They come to play. Come the Blue Devils. Controlling the puck was Carlson. Back to the point. Nobody there. Here come the Bears. This is Levender. Levender's pass. He tried to get uh, to Haas out in front. Levender tees it up in his shot. May have hit the side of the net. Oh, we got a slash coming. And the Blue Devils are going to go on the power play. Not a good play by number six of the Bears. Well, it went right to the back of the head of Captain Dylan Drake. Outline uh, is arguing... Uh, was there some contact there between uh, 21 Dylan Drake um, that could have caused a little bit of, of, of another call? Uh, but they're talking right now, I think, of whether or not this is going to be. Oh, he's sending somebody over right now. Todd Sky is sending over. It's going to be a two and ten. Uh, it appears to me, no, that I think they're just going to even out. So there was a high stick and a slash. It's going to even it out five on five. So where Virginia originally was going to have a power play, and that's what I was talking about just before they sent him over, is that there was a little discussion between the referees on what what happened. Why did the guy turn around and whack him? Well, there might have been a bit of a high stick there from Dylan Drake in the slot. However, I, I feel like the idea may have got put into his head by uh, Will Troutline as he came over and argued, and good for him. He got the referee to at least have a conversation. So they're skating five aside. Here comes Scherf, gives it to Peterson. His shot off the block. Another shot taken by Scherf, and then he gets whacked at the side of the net as the puck gets cleared. Here comes Matson after the puck. Cooper Matson's shot, and it hit the Blue Devil. That was Nemanich. What do I like watching Ryan Scherf move his feet? I mean, does it? Do they ever stop? He's just like a, a little spark plug out there. He just makes so much happen for the Blue Devils. 
like, sure. It's just all over. His energy is it's just absolutely contagious, Bob. He just, you watch him play, and he's got a patch on his shoulder. He's got an A on the shoulder. Um, and he is a lead-by-example type of player that I think any high school team would love to have. Just over nine minutes to play. Second period. Puck gets dumped into the Virginia zone by Nick Troutwine. Van Orsdale try to control it along the boards. He goes in and gets knocked down. Now Matson gets it in deep for the Bears. Seppla shoots it along the backboards, try to get it to Nemanich. This is Nemanich for the Blue Devils into center ice, and he'll rifle it in, and now the Blue Devils will complete that line change. Trout White cannot control it, but Badette will of the Bears. Here comes the big defensive man, Nick Badette, Evleth Gilbert. Now Bryce Kopp will control it in behind the Virginia net. Under eight and a half to go in our second period. 2-1 Evleth Gilbert over Virginia. High school hockey from the Cooplet Arena. Puck comes back to Will Troutwine. The shot was deflected by Rudabush to the far boards. Now Badet will keep it in for Evleth Gilbert. Sis Kopp gives it to Meyer and his shot was deflected up into the crowd. Time for a break with 8.02 to play in our second period. 2-1 Evleth Gilbert. This is My Nine Sports on this Thursday night. face off the puck is controlled by Callister in behind and he lost control of it to Scherf. Now Will Troutwine. Gage Everson puts it in for Elvith Gilbert. Braden Tiedemann off the boards but it'll be kept in right in on Kangas and he'll just cover up and he'll get a Blue Devil face off. Well, this is such a, such a great opportunity for high school hockey players to be able to be in a rivalry game like this, on a Thursday night, on television, in front of uh, uh, the people that are watching from northern Minnesota, it's reaching all the way down to Spooner, Wisconsin right now, where former Blue Devil captain Cade Moreland and my cousin uh, is watching right now. He's, he's playing junior hockey down there for the Spooner Lumberjacks uh, in the Superior International League right now. and. Uh, Great to have you watching, young man, and I hope everything's going for you, going well for you over there, playing some junior hockey, and uh, good luck for the rest of the season. Here comes Halliday back, dumps it in for Elvith Gilbert. Nemanich off the backboards for Seppala. Up to Peterson, now to Scherf. Scherf trying to get it up to Irvin, off Irvin's stick. And the Bears will break back out. This is Shalotic. In the center ice. Now to Cop, who's playing on this line. In behind the net, Shalotic will run it down in the corner. Being hounded by Seppel of the Blue Devils. This is Shalotic. Shot off the blocker of goaltender. Came. Boy, it came off the... Boy, sometimes it comes off that uh, corner funny, and that time it almost... Uh, confused everyone in right to the slot area well that's what happens sometimes in that corner and they did they did fix that uh, the door but sometimes there's a gap there that if you ring the puck in the right spot it's kicking right out to the slot here's cooper matson with the puck 
off a Blue Devil skate. Now it's Copper right in front of shot and a great save by Kangas. I got to tell you something. Back in the 70s, this place was always packed. And the person playing the organ is watching tonight. Steve Baggage is watching <laughs> from Arizona. He had this place rocking back in the 70s. It was unbelievable. They, The State High School League made him take the organ out. But this place, he oh, had it brutal. when the Blues go marching in. And it was just unbelievable. Oh, that sounds awesome. I, it, too bad we can't have the organ playing anymore. That sounds yeah. great. Yep. So I want to say hello to Steve. He's watching tonight in Arizona. Here's a shot to right out front. The puck is loose. And lots of bodies in front. And Matson coming back. Tried to get it over to Badette. Back checking was Tiedemann who prevented Badette from getting a stick. Right out front. Oh, another save by Kangas. Pressure on. Five and a half to go in our second period. A 2-1 Bears lead to the side. Oh, Tiedemann with a big hit on Matson. A pair of 26s. Oh, man, that was a... That was a good, clean hit. Well, this is where we're talking. The emotion is going to start taking over here. We're, we're just about finished with the second period here. We're five minutes left. Here, the teams are... Here's Nick Troutwine. Wide open net. And it was cleared away. And now Drake is after a Troutwine. And Drake. Drake controls it. And it gets taken down. The teams are getting physical. The emotions are kicking in. And the referees are allowing them to play hockey. Here's Badette coming back. He gets ridden off to play by Tiedemann. Battling in that corner and Tiedemann will come away with it. Four and a half minutes to play in our second period. All the goals were scored in the first three minutes of tonight's first period. Here's a shot, save made by goaltender Mac Lodiger. Well, this place has got a decent amount of people in it, but, uh, you know, we always get some great feedback here from, from our viewers and uh, a great piece from another good friend, uh, Jim Zupitz says, uh, back in the 80s, it was just as packed and uh, uh, just as electric. Uh, I, don't, I don't disagree. I, I'm sure it was great. Here's the shot and a save made. Here come the Blue Devils back. Brendan Peterson, he gets knocked off the play. Ben Irvin after centering pass right to the slot area, and Will Troutwine clears it back to the near boards. Now Gage Everson coming back, and we have an offside call. We've got a break in the action. My Nine Sports on this Thursday night from the Bree Coupletti Arena. Starkovich Distributing Company in Virginia has been a longtime Blue Devils sponsor on Channel 5 Television Sports and has been a big contributor to the economic climate on the Iron Range for over 70 years. Call 741-9061 when you're looking for someone to supply your beverage needs. Face-off controlled by the Bears. Now the loose puck is picked up by Drake. Gets it to Rudabush. Tries to come back to Drake. And Lodiger steers it to the back wall. A couple nice passes there. Here's Nemanich taking the shot. And it hit a golden bear in front. That was Halliday. Now Tassoni will pick up the puck. He gets ridden off the play. Halliday comes in after it. Everson will grab the loose puck. Comes to the side of the, and we have a whistle. What do we have? Well, I'm going to say, uh, I, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say it could be interesting. It uh, looks like a shot to the head. Uh, there is going to be a penalty, and it's going to put the Golden Bears on the power play, but the question is, is it going to be a five-minute major? It could very well be. I don't see any time going up on the clock just yet, but it was, I believe it was Dylan Drake that took the penalty. And it's a five, oh, no, it wasn't Dylan Drake. It was Ben Irvin. And it's a five minute major, which means in uh, at any level, at any level a five minute major, if you score a goal, that person does not come out of the penalty box. That team can score as many power play goals as they can in five minutes. And, uh, Here's 
Ben Irvin's going to serve the five-minute major for head contact. As we get back to action, a five-minute major penalty in the Golden Bears on the power play. Power play time for the Bears, and then they ice the puck. So they have the face off all the way back in the Golden Bear zone. Well, we saw the penalty there just a little bit ago, uh, a head contact penalty there uh, by the Blue Devils. Ben Irvin is serving a five minute major. And uh, like we said there earlier, we were having some technical difficulties. I think we're back in action here right now. But a five minute major, could be scary if the Blue Devils aren't on point when it comes to their penalty kill right now. And as of right now, Blue Devil penalty kill is pumping at about 61%, which is a little less than par, to be honest. Uh, you typically want to be in the 80s, Bob. Uh, 90s is phenomenal. Evelyn Gilbert PK is 84%, so that explains a little bit more about where you'd like to be when it comes to special teams. Here's Van Orsdale into the attacking zone. Van Orsdale gets knocked off the play by Tiedemann. Elliott will regain control of it. Back to Everson. Now to Troutwine. Back to Everson. Under two minutes to play in the period. Shot saved by Kangas. Now Bryce Kopp in behind for Van Orsdale. Van Orsdale to this near side. And now it's picked up by Ryan Scherf off the boards. And it'll be kept in by Everson. Cop to Troutwine. Puck is loose. Here's a shot just wide. Side of the net. Here's Bonnet shoots it over. And what a play what by Pegas. What a save. And I'll tell you. You take a look at a guy that's the size of Nick Baudet in the slot. He's tough to move, and there's a big bullet shot. And a shot there by Van Orsdell. He went hard to the net. Um, you know, a coach could complain about uh, contact on the goalie, interference with the goalie. You know, I like when guys go to the net. I'm sure goalies don't like when guys go to the net, but I do. <laughs> In center ice, it's picked up by Drake. Here comes Dylan Drake. His shot was just wide. Bears on the man advantage for the remaining 113 of the period, and they'll have a minute plus in the third period. Now Nick Troutwine in his own end, off the boards for Everson. This is the sophomore, Nick Troutwine. Halliday try to control it. Nemnich lost his stick. This is Shalotic along the near boards. He'll give it for Halliday. It'll come back to Nick Troutwine. Now to Everson. 30 seconds to go in our period. Halliday pass right on front. Here's a shot over the top of the net by Shalotic. Well, that was a scary setup there. Buck went right behind the back and found Schlotik there on the back door, but he just couldn't get it under the bar. Nice little, oh, it was a, a, a little kick off the skate. And it just went off of the shoulder of Ian Kangas and out of play. And there's about two minutes and two seconds left in the power play and 28 seconds left in the period. So the Bears are gonna come back with a decent sized power play in the third. Here's Badette shot saved by Kangas and he'll just cover it up. You know, Bob, when you're that big, the size of Nick Baudet, all you have to do, watch this, all you have to do is lean on him and go to the net. He sticks his leg out, and that's just the quality puck protect move that you can do when you weigh 
250 pounds like he does. He is absolutely enormous. And he's solid. He's... Yeah, and he's not out of shape by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, this guy is built. Here comes Trout Wine, six seconds to go in the period. Trout Wine on his backhand, right out front, deflected away. And our clock is going to run out, and period number two is in the books. We've played 34 minutes of hockey. It's the Golden Bears of Evelyn Gilbert, two, and the Blue Devils of Virginia, one. And we'll have our intermission after this timeout. The P.S. Engman Agency is a family-owned business that has served the area with compassion and quality service for over 100 years. We are grateful for their fine support of Blue Devil Sports on Channel 5. I didn't get my degree right out of high school and I ended up getting married and having a few kids. My daughter, she was going through the college, she got her AA degree. She just kind of was like, hey mom, you know, you can do it too. And the professors are really encouraging, everybody's just supportive. This May I'm looking forward to graduation and walking with their support. My name is Desiree and this is my Masabi story. Welcome back here. I'm alongside Chris Weston, assistant hockey coach here at Virginia MIB, the Blue Devils. Westy, uh, you guys had a game Tuesday night against Duluth Denfeld. Tell us your thoughts on that game Tuesday night. Um, I thought we started slow in the first period, fell behind by three goals early on, battled back in the second, made it a two-goal game, hit a pipe early in the third. Uh, I think penalties cost us a little bit Tuesday night. Denfeld's got a pretty good team this year, some good sophomores. They'll be a Section 7A contender, so um, got to take the positives out of it. Uh, move, move forward to tonight, big game tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Chris, uh, you know, what do you what do you expect here uh, from Eveleth Gilbert here tonight in, uh, in a big rivalry game here at the Miners building? Uh, it should be a fun crowd. Uh, only a couple more years of this virginia Eveleth rivalry, so... I expect there to be a big crowd. Avalos got a pretty good group of seniors this year, some upperclassmen, they'll be a good hockey team. They've had some good results early on. Yeah, they've got uh, they've got some talent on the back end and uh, maybe an area of concern for the Blue Devils, but uh, obviously with the preparation that you guys have, tell us what you guys can do uh, to execute against the, uh, the Blue Devils, or excuse me, the, uh, the Golden Bears tonight. Oh, well, we gotta get pucks behind their defensemen, go to work on the four check capitalize on their mistakes uh, if we get any odd man rushes you got to capitalize power plays have to stay out of the box there it looks like their special teams are pretty good so should be a fun game good crowd good atmosphere yeah when you get when you get talented guys on the back end obviously uh, an area of concern is the power play when you got players that are as good as uh, the trout line boys back on the point and they talk about uh, what it's going to be to be able to kill penalties against a power play like that uh, we have to front pucks get back to the middle real quick uh, sticks and passing lanes 
I mean, the main thing is we have to stay out of the box altogether. But. <laughs> that would be definite key to this. Uh, real quick here, talk about what the rivalry has meant here. And as you said, it's coming to a close here soon. But uh, real quick, talk about what the rivalry has meant and how excited it's going to be to co-op these two teams. Uh, I mean, the rivalry, you grow up as a little kid. You're five miles apart. You're playing the same kids growing up all the way through. As a little guy, you remember going to watch these games all the chirping and whatnot in the tunnels down at the hip and that kind of stuff. Uh, then you get to high school, you're five miles apart, you're playing the same kids growing up the whole way, whether it's baseball, football, hockey, all those things. So you always, I mean, you always want to beat the Golden Bears. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure, Chris. You know, this is going to be a great electric atmosphere, atmosphere here tonight for high school hockey. Good luck to you and the Blue Devils tonight. Uh, and good luck the rest of the year. All right, thank you very much. With the support of many fine sponsors such as these over the years, Wasabi Community Television and Locker Talk have been able to continue expanding. With announcer Bob Cohn and cameramen like Darwin Aller, Javante George and Justin Pullman, and with support from our program manager Lindsay George, in cooperation with Virginia's public schools and the City of Virginia, we've been able to keep upgrading. Currently, we can be seen live and via tape delay on Channel 5, YouTube, and Facebook. Masabi Community Television will also continue to bring you sports from Masabi East, Mount Iron Buell, and Chisholm Schools. Your mutual cooperation allows everyone to come out ahead. Welcome back to the Bree Cupoletti Arena in Virginia. We've played two periods of hockey. The Eveleth Gilbert Golden Bears on top of the Virginia Blue Devils by a score of two to one. We'll run down the stats and we'll have our third period action after this timeout. Morning. How's it going today, ma'am? I just want you to know, I love this city. I can always find a parking place, and I never have to parallel park. Look here, every car is bunched up over on that side of the street, so it makes it really easy for me to park. And what's so odd is that yesterday, every car was on that side of the street. Well, ma'am. Oh, just call me Yvette. And what was your name? Uh, I'm Chad. It's nice to meet you, Yvette. Uh, calendar parking is why all these cars are on this side of the street. Uh, here in Virginia we have calendar parking so that way the cars are on the right side so that way it makes it a little easier. So now on an even day you would park on the even side of the street as the addresses. So you see these house numbers over here all have even numbers. So on an even day you park on that side. On an odd day you would park on the same side of the street as the odd number houses. So during the winter months of November through April, we try to make sure that cars are parked on the even or odd side of the street, depending on the calendar day. So you're gonna give me a ticket? I thought you were so nice. I am nice, and I'll tell you why I'm nice. Because the Virginia Police Department, when calendar parking is followed, it ensures that our city crews can get out and plow all the roadways after a major snow event. Also, it makes it a lot safer for all the pedestrians and all other traffic in the area. Besides that, many of the streets in Virginia are narrow, so when it comes to emergency vehicles getting through, it's nice to have all the vehicles parked on the right side of the roadway, so ambulances, fire trucks, squad cars, even just regular vehicles can get through. I am so sorry. I didn't know. Can I tell you something else? Yes, I know. I know. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. What I was going to say is actually during the summer months, calendar parking changes a little bit. We try to make it a little easier for everybody. So from the months of May through October, you only have to worry about switching sides every two weeks. So on the first of the month, you make sure that you park on the odd side of the street. And on the evening of the 16th, you swap over to the even side of the street for the rest of the month. And just one more thing. Yes? How about you move your vehicle to the proper side of the street and we'll call it even. I could just hug you. Can I hug you? No, ma'am. But you need to know that 
Calendar parking always starts the previous evening. So at 6 p.m. the previous night, you always park for the very next day. Call me Yvette. Thank you, Yvette. the teams and now here come the Blue Devils back on the ice. The Golden Bears will follow shortly. 2-1 is our score. Shalotic scored 51 seconds in for the Bears. Scherfin scored on a power play about two minutes later and then Troutwine, Will Troutwine scored the seventh goal 25 seconds after Scherfin tied it to give the Bears a 2-1 lead. No scoring at all in that second period. Saves so far, Mac Lodiger has 10 saves in the Golden Bears net. Ian Carlson, 23 saves in the Blue Devils net. Bears have outshot the Blue Devils 25 to 11, but you know, stats mean nothing. It's what up on the scoreboard that counts. Well, right now you've got a minute and 33 seconds remaining in a, in a five minute major penalty, which is very crucial for the Blue Devils to take care of here right now. Um, but to be honest with you, uh, the person that's going to make the biggest difference right now, and he has been very good tonight, is Ian Kangas. It, between the pipes, uh, in order for you to have a solid penalty kill, your best penalty killer better be your goaltender. And right now, he's been on point here tonight, like you said, with 23 saves here tonight, but many of which were in a very key spot to be able to bury the puck, especially late in the second period on that power play. So uh, the Blue Devils right now really, really got to kill this off because they could still score more than one. He doesn't get out after a goal is scored. He is staying the full minute and 33 seconds remaining. So a very crucial minute and a half left here in this uh, in this penalty kill and you know, see what the Blue Devils can do to uh, hang with the Bears. Third period has really been the downfall for the Blue Devils this year just because of their lack of the depth and the Bears do have quite a bit of depth so we will see if the Blue Devils can stay with the Bears here in this final 17 minutes. Just underway, it's a power play. Here's Van Orsdale, right side. He'll drop it back for Will Troutwine. Now to Gage Everson. Bryce Kopp on the left side. Comes to the side of the net. And Kangas will cover up as Tr Odette was right there. Well, look at the size. I mean, we know we've talked about size of these guys, but Baudette, I mean, I don't think the camera does this guy justice. I mean, he's enormous. He's six foot six on his skates. With his gear on, he looks like he's about 300 pounds. <laughs> and I'll tell you, he, he's no slouch. The guy can skate. Puck comes back to the point where Will Troutwine will try to control it off. Break back to Troutwine. Now Van Orsdale. Right on front. Oh boy, Cop had a wide open corner and could not get the stick on it. Well, Bears looking to find Baudette in the middle and that thing came back to Cop on a, a loose puck bouncing right there and he just barely missed it. 30 seconds left here on the penalty kill and power play here for the Bears. Comes Everson into the Blue Devil end. Right side Everson's shot goes high over the top of the net and it jumps out over the blue line. 20 seconds to go on this man advantage. Van Orsdale setting up the power play on the right side. His shot over the top of the net. Cop will dump it in the corner of Van Orsdale. He'll control it on their left side. Carries in behind, comes right out in front. It's still in the slot area. Van Orsdale picks it up, puck is loose. Here's Cop left side. Now both teams are skating at five aside, off the boards and it'll clear the zone and this will be icing on Virginia. Boy, that is going to help uh, a struggling penalty kill uh, for the season thus far. Like we mentioned in the second period, the Blue Devils kicking at about 61% on the penalty kill and they just killed off a five minute major. That was a big five minute major to kill off and hopefully they're looking to get a little bit of a, a boot on uh, some momentum here the remaining period. Shot, puck is loose in front. Sheriff coming in after it. Now coming back is Halliday for the Bears. He has the puck poke checked away. Loose puck is picked up 
by Tiedemann. He gets turned back. He goes down in after his hell. A centering pass off the stick of goaltender Kangas. Now Nick Troutwine will keep it in the zone, and the Blue Devils will clear it back into the Elvis Gilbert end. Gavin Skelton will run it down. Here's a pass intercepted and a shot taken by Elijah Carlson. Good thing goaltender Mac Lodiger was paying attention. Sometimes you get caught sleeping on a play like that. Well, and he's only seen about 11 shots or 12 shots here tonight, but take a look. Buck just gets thrown up the middle and just a quick one, one timer right from the top of the circles. And you know, like I said, you get 11 shots on net in an evening and sometimes you get lulled to sleep. Gage Johnson will take the draw against Rudabush. Keegan wins the draw for Virginia. Now Everson in behind his net. He'll give it to Will Troutwine on the near side. Off a skate of Drake. And now it jumps back over the blue line. Nemnich will fire it in for the Blue Devils. 14 plus minutes to go in our hockey game. And we have offside called on Virginia. Well, I know we've talked about the discipline and there was you know, a goofy hit there where the Blue Devils had to take a five-minute major instead of five-minute major penalty, but they've been very disciplined here tonight. And not only in that side of the game, but staying out of the box, but in the side of the game where right now Coach Cale Finseth has them forechecking at a 1-2-2 two, two type of forecheck. And sometimes it's tough to get high school kids to, to sit back and relax and play for the turnover, but their 1-2-2 two, two is very, very disciplined. And the whole idea of the one two, 2 for those that don't know, is for them to create turnovers, to sit back, cover lanes, keep sticks on the ice, and wait to turn the puck over. And then when you turn it over, you're on offense. Everson will try to shoot it in deep. Now it's grabbed by Brady Seppla off the boards to Nemin. And right out in front of the net, the puck is loose. And Drake will clear it out and let it go the length of the ice. They'll wave off the icing. Everson will grab the puck for Evelyn Gilbert. 13.20 to play, a one goal Evelyn Gilbert lead. This is Alex Haas right to the slot area. It's cleared away, and the Blue Devils trying to break back out. Neminich off the boards. Trout Lionel fired right back in for Evelyn Gilbert. Now Scherf will grab the loose puck for Virginia. This is Peterson back to Scherf, and it's poke checked away from him. Coming back is Bryce Kopp for the Golden Bears. Left side, Kopp comes right in. Kangas with a save. Loose puck is cleared and fired up into the crowd, and a great catch. <laughs> and a catch by the Rudabush family. That's what it was. It was the father. It was Keegan's father who <laughs> stood up and made a catch, just like his daughter used to make a catch for me playing first base. Well, D Joy Rudabush sitting right next to him is a, is a good friend of ours. Uh, my wife was her, her sister's roommate in college, and uh, this was quite a few years back, and uh, she almost got it. Uh, Rudy was able to grab that thing so it didn't hit Joy in the face. <laughs> Tiedemann had it poke checked away. The puck is still in his own cop, took a whack at it. This is Badet, backhander, goes to the far corner where Peterson tries to clear it off, off Van Orsdale. Here come the Bears, and now he lost control of it, and Hopper just dumps it, trying to get it up to Sheriff, but goaltender Lodiger comes out and clears it away, and the Bears just shoot it back into neutral ice. Now Van Orsdale runs into Callister. Cop will go in after it. For Evelyn Gilbert, right out front is Cole Meyer waiting for a pass. Tiedemann again, official got in the way there. And now here is a shot taken by Meyer. And a save made. Boy, Cole Meyer also had a great, great fall season. We got a break in the action, 12.04 to play. My Nine Sports on this Thursday night from the Miners Memorial Building. Starkovich Distributing Company in Virginia has been a longtime Blue Devil sponsor on Channel 5 Television Sports and has been a big contributor to the economic climate on the Iron Range for over 70 years. Call 741-9061 when you're looking for someone to supply your beverage needs. Halliday wins the draw for the Bears. Here's Halliday, and it's cleared away by Kangas. Halliday tries to come out. Loose puck now picked up by Seppala. 
Shalonik tries to control it. Seplo tries to pin him in the boards. Back to Badetta. Rister and a glove save by goaltender Kangas. Well, Kangas is coming up big at the right time of the game. Uh, a couple of plays there early in the first period that he would like to have back, but a, a shot right from the point, it appears to me, that that was Badet and Kangas snags the near side shot with his catcher's mitt. Now to Sony, pass to Halliday, just a little bit behind Jack. And the Blue Devils will just flip it up into the rafters and we'll get another whistle. 2-1 Elvis Gilbert, three goals in the first three minutes and eight seconds. Well, this is the type of system right now that Coach Finseth wants to play. Uh, maybe not so much in the D zone. He wants to probably get after him a little more down in the defensive zone. But when the puck goes dumped in to the Eveleth end, he wants to sit back. And for good reason, he, he's, his depth is hurting him a little bit. He's got to rest guys like Ryan Scherf. And the way to do that is to dump the puck in, set up the 1-2-2, and... Two, Force him to skate out of the zone and and make a play. And right now, it's working out for him okay. Uh, except for the two goals early in the first period, they haven't given up a whole lot of plays on the rush. Maybe shots from face-offs and whatnot. Bears control it in their own end. Trout wine, 11 minutes to play in our hockey game. Comes Everson into the attacking zone, a shot. Goaltender Kangas steers it to the near boards. Troutwine dumps it in behind. Battling in behind that net, looking for the puck. And now the Blue Devils do get in the center ice. That was Haber, trying to get it up to Peterson. And with the player still in the penalty box for the five and 10, Coach Finseth even one more player short on his forwards here in this period. There's a long pass, a little bit behind Levender, and we've got a Golden Bear icing. 10-17 to go, Reed. It's been a good one, just what we expected. Well, the, the longer that this game goes on the way that it is, where it's a, a one-goal hockey game, uh, the more that's going to play into the favor of the Blue Devils because he he's, he's, he's playing for the opportunity to turn it over. And you get into that one-goal game with just a few minutes left and anything can happen. It's a bounce that can go anyone's way. And uh, I think right now, like I said, I think the Blue Devils are doing a really nice job of playing with what they got and, and being passive and waiting for the opportunities. Here's a little pass behind the man in the slot and the Bears have to tag up. Nemnich will, well, I guess it's gonna be Drake. He could not control it. Here's Van Orsdell and it's taken away. Cop cross ice pass, the shot taken, he flicked it in front. Kangas right on it. Now Nick Troutwine will give it to Cole Meyer. Still in the slot, here. right in front of shot, and a goal! Nick Troutwine will get the goal for the Golden Bears. Well, that was a play where the Golden Bears shot the puck on the net and they stuck with it with an extra shot and Nick Troutwine was there to get his own rebound. So a nice quick shot to the net and a quick turnaround and flip the backhand right over goaltender Ian Kangas. And what do you do, Kangas? There's not much you can do on that one. You made the first save. There's no reason why that puck should be back on his stick again. I'm sure that's what Coach Friedlieb down on the defensive end is saying, hey, you know, you got, he got the first shot off. The goalie made the first save. You gotta pick up sticks in front of the net. Um, and Will Troutline is able to get his own rebound and buries it for the insurance marker. Here come the Bears once again. Here comes Shalotic. He'll get up to Tassoni. 3-1 Eveleth Gilbert. Now it's picked up by Scherf, but it's taken away by Tassoni. And Shalotic will just rifle it in, goes up into the netting, and now they finally catch it, and they do blow a whistle. 
Nick Troutwein at 7.30 gets the goal. Badette and Van Orsdale with the assists. Well, the crowd's starting to settle in here just a little bit in the third period with just a few minutes left. And boy, that clock started here uh, real quick. We got eight and a half left. The Bears have the insurance marker on the board. And Coach Finseth, I'm sure, is considering changing the game plan here at this point in time. It doesn't do you any good to sit back and relax and play for the turnover now when you're down by two. Down by one, I can see you've opened on the prayer for the turnover. They were doing a nice job, but now it's going to be unhook the plow, pin your ears back, and see what you can get to the net. <laughs> Nemanich will grab the puck, and he'll fire it in for the Blue Devils. They'll also have to start pitching a little bit closer, too. Make something happen here in the final 8-15. Into the Virginia zone, Kangas just steers it away. Back to the point, and Drake will clear it off the glass, back into center ice. Here come the Bears in. That was Alex Haas once again, back to the point. Trotline shot, Haas tried to tip it. Now Levender in the corner gets pinned in there by Seppala. Comes right to the side of the net. We've got a stoppage of action. 7.44 to play in our hockey game. My Nine Sports on this Thursday night from the Cupoletti Arena. I'm in carpentry. Uh, we do a lot of woodworking. Uh, right now we're actually building a couple houses. I like the atmosphere. I like everybody around here, all the faculty, they really like to help out. My instructor, Leo Lucas, he's He's been in the field for at least 30 years or so. My goal with carpentry is to work for a larger company down in the cities. My name is Tyler Kemp and this is my Masabi story. Bears control the puck in the Virginia zone. Now Sepla off the boards, tries to get it up to Hopper. And now Ryan Scherf coming back. Here's Scherf, Haber back to Scherf. Haber's shot, and I think it may have hit Scherf. Scherf controls it in that corner, gets it back to the point. Here's a shot taken from the point. A lot of traffic, that was Seppel who took the shot. Now Van Orsdale gets it up to Cole Meyer. Loose puck is grabbed by Kopp. Here is Kopp, tees it up his shot. Oh, hit the pipe. You heard the metal. Now Van Orsdale. Left, right side, Van Orsdale, his shot. Hit some traffic in front. Troutwine's shot, hit a Blue Devil. 6.50 to play, and Virginia's rifles at the length of the ice, and we'll have a Blue Devil icing with 6.49 to play. Well, there again, we, we talked about this in the, uh, I think it was the first period about the rule change, if it ever comes to high school hockey, and, and the Blue Devils have been rolling Ryan Scherf every other shift. Uh, and they ice the puck here and, and any other level ahead of high school hockey or above, I should say. At any other level, uh, junior hockey, college hockey, professional hockey, that icing is going to keep that gassed line out there. Thank goodness for a high school rule, you can change after an icing. Uh, and for the Blue Devils, if you're a Blue Devil fan. Well, I'll tell you, I've watched Ryan Scherf in the last couple games, and I'll guarantee you, 645, he's probably going to play about five minutes of that 645. Well, and, and as he should. He's going to keep that motor going, and if I know the Scherf family like I do, that young man is in pretty darn good shape. Here comes Drake back for the Blue Devils. Tipped away, and Nate Tassoni lost control of it. A shot taken was just wide by Dylan Drake. Tiedemann will keep it in for the Blue Devils. Now Carlson controls it and then gets it to the back wall. Haltman, Lucas Haltman. Up to Shalata, cross ice to Tassoni. Come the Bears, Tassoni's blast. A blocker saved by cold tender Kangas. Six minutes to play. Bears with a 3-1 lead on Virginia. Tiedemann in behind his own net. Gets it up to Scherf. Here comes the alternate captain, cross ice. A little bit too much for Elijah Carlson. Trout line in his own end. Long pass off 
a stick, and Brendan Peterson will put it in for Virginia. Now Will Troutwine, the senior defensive man, into center ice. Pass a little bit too far for Parkinage. Are they going to get an icing down there and a face-off in the Golden Bear end? Maybe a chance to win a face-off and get some puck control. Our next telecast, one week from tonight, will be at the Heritage Sports Center. We'll have a double dip that night. 5.15, Duluth East and Duluth Marshall. 7.30, it'll be Superior and Duluth Denfeld. And another opportunity for me to sit next to you. I'll be next to you for the uh, Superior Denfeld game. I'm looking forward to it, Reed. Uh, it's always a fun time. Uh, uh, just have to throw a huge thank you to... Uh, uh, to Coach Hyduk, to Coach Hyduk, to uh, and the girls for allowing me to, to take the day off today to come down and do this. Uh, I missed my girls uh, at practice today, but this was a fun chance. And we appreciate it that Coach Hyduk let you do it. Just over five to go. Blue Devils trying to get some scoring opportunities here in the final five minutes. Back to the point. Nemin is the score of a shot deflected in front. And Parkinich comes back for the Golden Bears into the Virginia end. Going left side, over skates the puck. Nemnich will pick it up, gets it up to Hopper, but it's quickly taken away. And now Parkinich again controls it. He puts it right in on Kangas. the Blue Devils breaking out. Scherf will just put it in and he'll have the bench on a much needed 15 second rest. Puck is loose and is picked up by Rudabush. Off Elijah Carlson's stick. Carlson took a whack at it. Drake tries to carry it in. Puck is loose near the blue line. And Elliot Van Orsdale will come away with it for the Golden Bears. Left side, Van Orsdale. Lost his skate, goes down. Coming up on four minutes to play. Come the Blue Devils back. This is Drake coming in. Poke check back into neutral ice. Blue Devils will just put it right back in once again. Trout line. And now we have a whistle. We've got a slashing penalty. And we'll have more action. We'll take a timeout. My nine TV sports from the Miners Memorial Building on this Thursday night. Sabi Range College is, I think, the perfect college for a traditional or non-traditional student. I came here to start my nursing career. I, I really like being able to work with people rather than being secluded. Uh, being able to help people heal them, that makes a difference wearing your heart on your sleeve. My name is Becky and this is my Masabi story. play time for the Blue Devils as Elliot Van Orsdale goes off for slashing. Sheriff sure. centering pass right out front. Boy, great chance by Rudabush. What a great play from behind the net from Ryan Scherf to get that out front. Here's Cops pass intercepted. Here comes Scherf and the Blue Devils back. Stepping in front of the pass though was Bedette. He slows down the rush and now Scherf coming back. Over skates it. Rudabush. Gives it to Nemanich. And now it's fired. It was off the line, referee. We're in the position that we're in right now. We didn't get a chance to see, but there was a rush where Van Orsdell came down the rink, had a great chance to the net, um, and a Blue Devil pulled him down, and there was no call. Um, and then a little frustration with Van Orsdell, and he gave, uh, gave a Blue Devil a whack coming down the ice, and uh, referee Todd Skaya saw that one. They never seem to miss the retaliation. Sometimes they don't call the initial one, and uh, you, know, you feel bad for the kid, but then uh, lesson learned, you're in the sin bin for uh, retaliating. Cross ice pass. Coming in is Seppala. Here is Nemanja's shot. Save made, and it's clear the length of the ice. That was a good hard one-timer up top by Nemnich on the power play. Couple Blue Devils overskate the puck. And now here comes Troutwine in the zone. Here's Troutwine shot and a save off the chest protector of goaltender Kangas. 
Brandon Lynn in the corner will eat some more of the time as we're under 10 seconds to go on this power play. Taken away, and we've got a penalty, a holding penalty coming. That's coming on the Blue Devils. Oh, check that. That's coming on the Golden Bears. Uh, there could have been two calls there. I saw a hook coming out of the corner there as well, so... The first one looked as if it was, you can see one here. Oh, the hook was second. They called the first hold. The hook was a little late. Referee already had his hand up, and we got a timeout here. Coach Finseth using his timeout with two minutes remaining in the game, and he's gonna have a power play for the rest of the game, Bob. He has a two-man advantage for three seconds. Penalty was called on Brandon Lynn. That's the sixth penalty of the night on the Bears. Six penalties for 12 minutes. Blue Devils with no penalties in the first and no penalties so far here in the third. But we know in the final 156, it's going to be excitement and the inaction of from what we've seen in the past of Virginia Everett hockey games. I'm expecting a lot of excitement. Well, it's indicative of what you get every time these two teams play. And I, like I said, I don't care who's better this year or who's down or who's up. It, it doesn't even matter. Uh, if you can't get up for a rivalry game like this and play your best game, you should be doing something else like underwater basket weaving or something like that because maybe hockey's not for you. Both these teams empty in the tank here tonight, uh, playing their hearts out for their school because guess what? We're getting down to the wire. There's not going to be a Virginia high school here in the next couple of years or an Everett Gilbert high school in the next couple of years. It's going to be whatever they're going to call the new school. They've Either got Rock Ridge or Laurentian is what I've been told. Rock Ridge or Laurentian. I, you know what? I'm going to keep my comments to myself on the name choices. Um, I do like the colors, though, the color schemes that they've come up with. Yeah. Um, the only comment that I'll make is, is sometimes it's nice for people around the state to know where it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I think Laurentian maybe, like the Laurentian Divide, they, they would know where that is, but I don't know if people would know where Rock Ridge is. However, they still have the opportunity to have some bragging rights going into their meeting later on in uh, January. Yes. Uh, who's going to come out? Usually it's the second or third week in January where they play uh, the second time. And this uh, this time, or the second time, will be over at the Hippodrome at the historical Hippodrome Arena. It's like walking into a museum when you go over there. Bears now one man short for the remainder of our hockey game. Unless, of course, Virginia scores to cut that deficit. Seppola picks up the puck to Nemanich, back to Seppola. Now Sheriff back to Seppola. Here comes Brady Seppola into the zone. His shot right on, the save made. Here's a rebound shot by Nemanich, goes high over the top of the net. Well, that puck's gonna come out of the zone, unfortunately, uh, if you're a Blue Devil fan, that's coming out to the dot outside as it the referee is saying it went off of just the Blue Devil stick and out of play, and, and Coach Finseth is arguing, I think it went off of one of their guys, and the referees get to make that final decision. It looks like they're having a little uh, a tea party in front of the Golden Bear bench, and Jeff Terrell likes the decision. Power play for the Blue Devils, and now Virginia was offside, so we'll do it again. Well, it's been a fun night. My nine sports from the Bree Cupoletti Arena in Virginia on this Thursday night. Again, next Thursday night, we'll be at the Heritage Center in Duluth for a doubleheader, Duluth East, Duluth Marshall, 5:15, 7:30. It'll be Duluth Denfield and Superior. Soup Town. Here's a shot from Nemanich. Saved by Lodiger. Van Orsdale clears it. Here is Peterson. He'll lick over Rister, hits some traffic. Another shot taken by Drake. And it's cleared. Now Nemanich will pick up the puck. Nemanich will give it to 
Drake, he lets go of a shot, hit a stick. Blue Devil net is empty. They've got six attackers on the ice. Six on four. 37 seconds to play. A one goal lead, or two goal lead for the Golden Bears. Shot along the boards. Seppo try to keep it in and it clears the zone. Scherf back after it. Gets it to Peterson, cross Nemenich. Scherf off his stick and trout line. Here's Van Orsdale with the clincher. Final goal of the night with 12 seconds to go. Well, the, uh, the final nail gets pounded in to the coffin and the Golden Bears finish the evening are going to finish the evening four to one over the Blue Devils and the crowd is already dispersing they want to be the first out of the parking lot here at the Miners Complex and uh, there's still 14 seconds or 12 seconds left four to one is our score five seconds to play and the puck comes in the bear zone the clock runs out our hockey game is history and the up with gilbert golden bears get their fifth win of the season as they have defeated the virginia blue devils tonight by a score of four to one two goals in the first period for the bears two more here in the third and the blue devils getting their only goal in the first period from ryan sheriff we'll take a timeout reed and i'll come back run down the statistics and show you the highlights in tonight's hockey game Welcome back to the Bree Coupled Arena in Virginia, where My Nine Sports just presented the Elvith Gilbert against the Virginia Blue Devils in high school hockey. Bears come away with a 4-1 victory tonight, but it was just as exciting as we expected coming in. Bears a little bit more, uh, a little more uh, manpower this year than the Blue Devils in that first game tonight. Yeah, you know, you get players like uh, Will and Nick Trout one on the back end, and players like uh, Van Orsdell. Um, those guys made some pretty dynamic plays here to the net, and uh, it, it's it's tough to, to slow down, especially when you got some talented defensemen like that. Uh, but you know what? The Blue Devils played a very, very disciplined hockey game tonight. you got to hand it to them. They're outmanned as far as talent is concerned, uh, but, but Coach Cale Finseth did a really nice job with what he had with guys and uh, did a really good job of getting him to execute with some discipline on what he wanted him to do. Shots were 2-1 to one tonight, but Kangas stood his ground tonight he makes 37 saves in the nets while Lodiger with only 18 tonight so again it was a domination by the bears but again let's give coach uh, finseth a lot of credit Absolutely. for his kids the way they play they played about as hard as you could possibly play against the golden bears well tonight. that score could have been a heck of a lot different if ian kangas doesn't play the game that he played he he kept him in the game when he need when they needed him to and uh uh he played a great game as well Let's show our viewers now the uh, scoring in tonight's hockey game. The first one came awful quick. Tommy Shalotic scores for the Bears. Took him 51 seconds to get that goal. Top shelf making one nothing. Then here comes a little spark plug back. Ryan Scherf for the Blue Devils. This is a great little play. He blocks the, the pass in the neutral zone. He gets a quick far side shot, and that was on the power play. Now Troutwine with a lot of bodies in front gets one into the net making it 2-1 that's the way our first period ended no scoring in the second and then Nick Troutwine scored for the blue to, or for the Golden Bears to make it 3-1 and then our final goal of the night was just an empty netter an easy one for Elliot Van Orsdale making our final score 
four to one tonight. So the Blue Devils now have some time off. They don't play again until next weekend. They've got South St. Paul and uh, Breck coming into the Miners Memorial Building. The Bears now have a big one on next Tuesday night. They go over to Coleraine to take on Greenway kind of looking forward to see how that game turns out because that could be an interesting matchup. Well, that's going to be a great test for the Golden Bears to, to play a, a real high-level team here in the section and uh, the defending Section 7A champs, uh, Greenway, uh, Coleraine, and it feels good to say defending Section 7A champs and somebody other than what we've always been hearing. It's, it's great for hockey in the area for someone else to win, um, but we're going to see some interesting games here down the road here with uh, with the Herman Towns of the world as well too as well too because they're uh, a pretty darn good hockey team. But that's going to be a fun one to watch, a uh, fun one to get to, and uh, it's going to be a test for the Bears to to see Greenway. Well, I hope you enjoyed our telecast tonight. We had a lot of fun bringing it to our viewers. I want to thank our cameras tonight. Darwin on the main camera. We got Ryan and Buddha on our side cameras. Also for John back at KBGR and Terry Hardica down in the truck making all the, the right connections so we're able to have the game on. For Reed Larson, I'm Bob Cohn. Once again, our final score tonight, the Eveleth Gilbert Golden Bears 4 in the Virginia Blue Devils 1. Good night, everyone. in the center ice. Now the puck comes into the Blue Devils zone. They battle for it and it goes in deep. But they went on front row, oh, what a save! Oh boy, the Blue Devils got really careless in their own and Moyer almost made Virginia. Almost cost the Blue Devil one. Senior with a big save for the Blue Devils. Here they come attacking once again. This is Hallett, gets it into the Virginia end. Try to hit Strife. And now it's clear, here come the Blue Devils. This is Jack Zupitz coming in. Zupitz is shot and a save by goaltender Orchard. Oh, a great chance by number 11 of the Blue Devils.